Welcome to Learn Next to Live Mindsetters. It's Maths Literacy for Grade 12s. So guys, I'm here with Peter, who's going to be taking you through this lesson. So Peter, what are we going to be doing today? <laughs> okay, well first of all, I think this is the first time our Grade 12s are seeing you, Ty. So welcome, and it's really good to have you. Guys, we're going to be doing a bit of graph work. Um, the weather out there, if you're in Joburg, is absolutely horrific. It's been raining all day. In fact, it's been like a cold winter's day. I've worn jacks. In fact, I've even got a long sleeve shirt on today. It's quite it's cool here in Joburg. Yeah. Um, so there's no reason to run away okay absolutely not you know, that just reminds me what umbrella what type of umbrella does the queen use on a raining day to be honest i have no clue a wet one what's a oh that's quite simple really hey? but you know rain is great the other day i went off to the Karoo. I, I do a bit of traveling where we do maths literacy around the country and i went off to the Karoo, and it's really really dry there folks in fact it was so dry the, the, the trees were chasing the dogs. It was, you know, they were desperate. It was rough, you know. I, I, I see where you're going okay, with that You one. must laugh sometimes. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think we're going to take a break, but I'm not allowed to say that. Yes. So, guys, in this week's lesson, we're going to be discussing compound change. And next week's lesson, um, we're going to actually, what are we going to do? No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Last week, we discussed compound change. This week, we're doing some graph work. Well, I hope so. That's what I'm doing. Well, Guys, make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you have your pens and pads out. You're making notes. So guys, we'll see you just after this break. Guys, welcome back to Learn Extra Live. This is grade, tw grade 12, learn Maths Literacy. And guys, I'm giving away this book. It's got all the past papers from 2008 to 2011 with memos and notes. So guys, get those questions in. Make sure you're talking to me on Facebook. I know this would be super handy. So make sure you guys get those questions to me. So guys, also this week, we're doing drawing graphs of real life situations. And next week, make sure if you're working in a group, you let everybody know and you send everybody messages. In fact, just tell them on the page to go check it out. Guys, we're going to be drawing and interpreting more than one graph on a system of axes. So guys, make sure you're there. So Pete, I'm going to hand right back to you. I'm joking. <laughs> I was just trying to give my producer a bit of a heart attack. I was just pretending I was talking and nothing else was coming out. Because the point I was trying to get across, besides giving my producer a heart attack, was the fact that if you are in grade 12 and you missed our grade 11 session, then it was like you've missed the whole lot. Then I might as well be here and just miming words and not saying anything. Like, you know what I mean? So guys, please, if you're grade 12, you've got to watch the grade 11 session as well. Because today what we're doing in grade 12 is actually building on from what we just did in the last session with our grade 11s. And that is we're looking at graph work. All right? So, best way to learn then, obviously, is by doing some examples. So, that's what we're going to look at now. So, question one. So, it's all about drawing graphs in real life situations. So, let's have a look at here. Now, a group of people travel to work together in the same vehicle in order to save costs. The car belongs to a chap called Michael. A rather unstable chap, but he's trying to save money and a little of the environment. Below is a graph which shows how much it costs him for petrol to travel to work as dependent upon the number of people in his car. Take note that these costs are for a single, a one-way trip only. Okay. If you're 18, and a lot of you guys are 18, and you're saying, oh, ma, dad, can I just borrow the car quickly? Okay? And your mom and dad say, okay, cool, you can take the car by all means, but you've got to put the petrol in. No, no problem, dad. And you get to a petrol station, and your heart nearly attacks you. Okay? Because suddenly you realize that petrol it costs an absolute fortune. So does diesel. I have a car that goes on diesel, and diesel's now, what's around about 11 rand 80 a liter? Okay? Holy cow, that's more expensive than water. Yeah, we live in a country which is pouring and pouring and pouring with rain, okay? And you're paying so much for a bottle of water and petrol is like nearly the same price nowadays, okay? Petrol's getting out of hand, so is diesel, okay? If the Minister of Finance is watching, yeah. Okay, anyway, that's another story. So, 11 rand 80 for a litre of diesel, horrific stuff. So, we got a guy called Michael, and every day Michael travels to work. Okay? And every day he travels back from work, because that's always good. Once you're at work, it's good to come home on the odd occasion. So that's what Michael does. And then one day he sits and he thinks to himself, myself, it might be quite a good idea if I get some people 
to come in the car with me. In other words, to form a carpool, where a group of people get in the same vehicle, we travel to work and we travel back, but now we share the costs of that petrol or the cost of that trip. And so that's what Michael does. And so he sits down and he draws this graph. Why does he do that? Well, for two reasons. Reason number one, because he did mathematical literacy at school and he knows how to do it. And reason number two, because it's the same as reason number one. Okay, so here we go. And he says, for me to go to work every day cost me 30 rand. Here it is right over here, okay? Uh, 30 rand. But if two people, if I take somebody else with me, now there are two of us, instead of paying 30 rand, I only get to pay 15 rand because I'm going to charge the guy next to me 15 rand as well. We're going to share the costs. So now, 15 rand. What happens if three people get in the car? Ah, oh, well, if there are three of us, we're going to take the cost of the 30 rand and we're now going to divide it between three. So instead of paying 30 rand, we're going to pay 10 rand, 10 rand, 10 rand each. And there it is there on the graph. What happens if there are four people in the uh, vehicle? In other words, there's Michael and three passengers. Well, now we've got the 30 rand. We divide it by four and we come up with another figure altogether. What figure do we come up? What's 30 divided by four? Round about 7 rand 50, something like True. that. Okay, there it is, 7 rand 50. Okay. And finally, if there are five people in the car, time, this is an easy one, eh? five in the car, total 30 rand, going to land up being? Three. Six rand each. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there it is. Ty. Okay. Ty doesn't know me. For those of you who've just joined us then, Ty is new on the program. He doesn't quite know me that I'm going to ask him questions every now and then. So he's really got to pay attention and listen. So I'm, I'm sorry about I'm that. I'm juggling between okay. talking to you guys and All right. <laughs> right. So can we understand how the graph works? Let me get rid of these points here so we can see it a lot clearer. Now let's look at a few of the questions. Question number one. How much does the petrol cost for Michael to travel to work and home if he's traveling alone? Okay, well, it's quite easy, isn't it? It's 30 Rand. No, 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 it's not. Because 30 Rand was a one-way trip. So if it's cost me 30 Rand there, it's going to cost him 30 Rand back. So the answer, quite simply, is it's 60 Rand. Okay, because it was 30 Rand, but we're going there and back. So it's going to cost him a total of 60 rand. Yeesh, imagine paying 60 rand just to get to a place you don't want to go to. Okay, now, next thing. How much would it cost each person for a single trip if there were two people in the car? Well, there are two people. It's going to land up costing me 15 rand per person. Am I going to double it? No, I'm not. Because I don't want to know how much it costs there and back. I just want to know how much does it cost to get to work. 15 Rand per person if there are two in the car. Next question. How many passengers besides Michael? Oh, now the examiner is starting to throw in some tricky little things here. Hey? How many passengers besides Michael would be using the carpool if each person paid 15 rand for the return trip, okay, or for a return trip. In other words, we're traveling from um, work to back, uh, to work to back, back. From, uh, <laughs> from home to work and then from work back home. Okay, so if it's going to cost 15 rand for a double trip, it means a single trip costs 7 rand 50. Now, where does it cost 7 Rand 50? Over here, when there are four people in the vehicle. So let's go through that again. The question was, how much will it cost, or how many people are in the car if it costs 15 Rand for a return trip? Okay? So, in other words, one way must be 7 Rand 50. And 7 Rand 50, there are four people in the vehicle. But that was not the question. Hey? The question was, how many people besides Michael? So if we got a total of four people in the car, we take Michael away, then we've got three people or three passengers that were in Michael's car. So my answer quite simply then is 
three. Okay, do you understand how that works? Be careful, the examiner's trying to be a little bit tricky with you. Not such a nice thing to do, but let's carry on. Next question. Presuming Michael was intelligent, why did he only draw the graph for up to five people and not continue the graph further? So let's have a look at the graph. Can you see how he stopped at five? He hasn't gone on to six. Because if he had, the graph would have continued like that. But he hasn't done that. He said, no, I'm only stopping at five. Why would he do that? Well, I would presume he would have done that because he's saying, you know what, my car can only take me and four others. Me here in the driver's seat, someone next to me, and three people in the back. That's the legal rule, and that's what I'm going to stick to. Okay, that's the law, that's it, not allowed to overload. Me, passenger, three other passengers, five of us in total. Easy? Of course it is. Let's go on. Next question. Determine how much, oh, this was a fun question, hey? Determine how much Michael's travels would cost him for one week of travel to and from work if he had the following passengers in his car. Okay, now to answer this, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to give us more space here, and I'm going to say, there's a cost on Monday, there's a cost on Tuesday, there's a cost on Wednesday, there's a cost on, yeah, you guessed it, Thursday, and fr finally, Ty, Friday. Friday. There Which we go. everybody looks forward to. <laughs> Everyone looks forward to a Friday. You know, I'm paying petrol to get home on a Friday. Okay, now... On Monday, how much is Michael going to pay? On Monday, he's got two other passengers beside himself. So in other words, there are three people in the car. Agreed? Now, if there are three people in the car, we worked out here that three people each pay 10 Rand. So Monday, everyone is going to pay 10 Rand, including Michael. But that's just to work. He's got to come home. So we're going to say it's 10 times 2, so Monday, Michael is paying 20 Rand. On Tuesday, there are three other passengers beside himself. So if there are three other passengers, then he makes the fourth person. So if there are four people in the car, our graph shows that each one's paying 7 Rand 50. So now we've got 7 Rand 50, but it's there and back. So a total of 15 Rand. Happy? Of course you are. Wednesday, he traveled alone. Okay? All the other passengers said, look, Sorry, I don't want to travel with you today. I'm starting later. Another passenger said, look, I don't want to travel with you because I'm finishing early and I don't want to wait for you. The third passenger said, look, I'm just not going to work. And the fourth passenger said, I just don't like you today. Okay, so he's traveling alone. If he travels alone, do you remember? He's going to pay 30 Rand. So we're going to say, right, Mark, today you're paying 30 Rand, but that's just to work. You've got to come home. You're going to pay 60 Rand. Thursday, four other passengers. In other words, they're five people. So if the total trip was 30 Rand, we divide it by five, each person's paying six Rand, including Michael. But that's just to work. He's got to come home. Why? Because they're dishes that he's got to clean. Right. Now, Friday, he traveled alone. We said if you travel alone, it costs you 30 Rand. But you've got to come home, 60 Rand. Now all we've got to do is we've now just simply got to add up those figures. So we're going to say 5 and 2 is 7, 2, 3, and 6 is 9, 10, 16, 167 Rand. So that's what Michael is paying just to get to work and back because he's sharing with people. Question that doesn't uh, show here, but one that we could look at. We could have asked this question. How much is he saving by letting these people travel with him? So if we were to look at that, we could say, well, normally he would pay 60 Rand every day. Times five, he would normally be paying 300 Rand. But now he's only paying 100 Rand. 67 Rand. In other words, he's saving 133 Rand just by being willing 
to share his car with other people. And Ty, I think if more people did that, I tell you what, the congestion on the road would be, be radically so reduced. Less, yeah. We'd save so much petrol, there would be less damage to the environment. Reducing okay. the carbon footprint. Absolutely. Okay. So guys, even though you're only in matric now, next year when you start working, here's a good idea. Hey? When you go to work, try and find people who are traveling in the same direction as you and offer them lifts. Say, come, let's share, man. Number one, we're getting cars off the road. Number two, we're saving a bit of the environment. Number three, you're saving money in your pocket. And any saving in my pocket is always welcome. I don't know about you. Any time I can save money will be awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Are we taking a break or will we keep going? I think for now we can actually just keep going. I'm still waiting for a lot of you guys need to post those questions, send them through to me. But yeah, I think for now we can just keep going for a little bit longer. Okay, great. So our next question is this is something to do with traveling, but it's more to do with traveling in an aeroplane, okay? And those of you who watched my program last week would, would realize uh, I mentioned that I really don't enjoy flying. I, I just, it just, for me, it makes no sense that this huge iron metal uh, contraption <laughs> just stays up in the air. I have no idea how that happens. Like I said, if I get a piece of metal and put it in the air and let it go, it falls to the ground and yet somehow when you're in one of those funny things, you stay up there. It's like a boat as well. Hey? Yeah. yeah maybe, maybe you should actually tune in on the science lessons. That I, would be helpful. I should tune in on the science <laughs> lessons. I think I do. Because it's huge metal just floats on the water. If I put metal in the bath, it just sinks. Sinks, yeah. Absolutely. Good. Okay. So, let's look at flying. So, if I want to fly. Now, guys, this question is a real life question. Okay. Just like our previous one. If I want to fly, what I can do is if I live in, in Johannesburg, I can either go off to the car train station, get on the car train, and in 14 minutes from Santon all the way through to the airport. Wonderful thing that, at only 100 rand. Okay, 105 rand. But if I decide, you know what, I'm going to take my own car and I'm going to park it at the airport. Now at our Tambo Airport what you can do is you can go along and you can park your car at the airport in one of uh, the parking buildings. All right? Or you can pre-arrange with a company and say to a company, listen, I'm bringing my car in, meet me at the terminal, why would they call a building at an airport a terminal? You see, this is why I hate flying. <laughs> okay, so um, why would you want to be terminal? Yeah, right, anyway, so <laughs> you can say, meet me at the terminal and take my vehicle. And what these companies do is they meet you there, you get out the vehicle, they take your vehicle and they go and park it somewhere and look after it. Okay? You just let them know what day you're coming back and they will meet you with your vehicle. And you know the great thing is they even wash it and polish it and make it look nice. Okay. Now one of these companies at the airport, and this is taken from their website, is a company called SU Parking. Okay, so before we take the break, let's just read all about this. And the issue parking, if you look on the screen over here, it actually shows you more or less where you've got to go, where they pick up the vehicle. And this is what the guys look like, so you'll be able to recognize them. It says issue parking. The guy's got a, a, a tag on, a, uh, an identification tag. Um, it, it, you can recognize them. They're not going to just take your car and drive off with it. Well, maybe they will. I don't know. But generally, they're not going to. Okay. So, what happens is this. SU Parking is a registered business with South African uh, Kipro Registry, blah, 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 blah. Here's the important thing. Okay. Our rates. If you say to them, please keep my car for one day, they will charge you 60 Rand for that day. If you say keep my car for two days, they will charge you 60 Rand for each of those days. So that's 120 Rand. In fact, up to five days, they are only charging you 60 Rand a day. If you're keeping your car with them for between six and 10 days, they're going to charge you 50 Rand per day. Between 11 and 15 days, 40 Rand. And between 16 days uh, and more, they've got an SQ then. We'll talk about what that means later on. Okay? So understand, for example, if you um, you're parking your car, it says hiring, it shouldn't, let's get rid of that. If parking a car for seven days will be seven times that daily rate of 50 Rand will be 350 Rand. Okay. I think now it's time for a break because my voice is getting all funny as well. Here. Yeah, true. And soon I will be talking 
<laughs> on mute. Um, by the way, we just had two of the one of uh, two of the ac actual guys on the page were like, hmm, if you could backtrack a little, I think one of the questions was a bit off. I think that 165 was meant to be 175. For which one was that? I think that was a couple of questions back. Oh, uh, really? Okay, well, during the break, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll check that out. So, guys, make sure you keep talking on the page. And if you're as observant as these guys, make sure you post, post, post. Talk to me on Facebook and on Twitter. Guys, we'll see you just after this break. Guys, welcome back to Learn Extra Live, Grade 12 Maths Literacy. I'm here with Peter, and Peter's going to go through some more examples for you guys to make sure that you understand. So guys, again, make sure you hit me up on the Facebook page and on Twitter, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra, and at learn extra on Twitter. And Peter, I'm going to hand over back to you. Okay, great. Before we carry on with the question we were dealing with, just before the break, there was someone who had a query. What was his yes. name? Um, Kashifa and Mohammed asked, okay. wasn't it 172 Rand? Okay, um, and I think they were talking about this, this question, question over here. And no, it's not, hey? Um, 10 Rand times 2 is 20. 750 times 2 is 15. 30 times 2 is 60. 6 times 2 is 12. 30 times 2 is 60. When we add it up, 5 and 2 is 7. 2, 3, 9, 10, 16, it is 167. Okay, awesome. but thanks for observing anyway. That's quite great that you do that. All right, and always remember there's no such thing as a stupid question. If you're not sure, do query it. We'll come back to you. We'll try and help you out. And uh, it's always good to know that you're still interacting with us. Okay, but I think I've got to carry on. And let's get back to the question we were dealing with. Okay, this is our question. All right, no, we've gone too far now. Sorry, guys. There we go. All right, so the question was all about um, a company that actually uh, you can use them when you go to Oro Tambo Airport and you say to them, listen, guys, I'm bringing my car and please meet me. They meet you. You don't even have to worry about parking. They meet you there. They take your car. They go and park it somewhere else in a safe place for you. When you get back, you tell them I'm coming back on the 5th of the month. On the 5th of the month, they're there to meet you. They hand you back your car. And the great thing about it is nice and polished and cleaned and it really looks good. Okay, so we were looking just before the break then um, at some of the tariff structures and it was quite clear that if I hide the car for one to five days, oh sorry, not hide the car, if I park my car from one to five days, they're going to charge me 60 Rand a day. If I park it anything from six to 10 days, they're going to charge me 50 Rand a day. If I park it anything from 11 to 15 days, 40 Rand a day. And if I park it 16 days or more, there's a SQ and I wonder what that SQ means we'll talk about that now so our first question is simply this how much would you pay per day if you parked your car for 12 days let's go back and look at this tariff system this tariff system says 12 fits into this category over here okay let's use a different color a lovely yellow right so if I park between 11 and 15 days I'm only paying 40 Rand a day so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, right, we're going to pay 40 Rand a day for those 12 days. And I think that should give me 480. Let's use our wonderful calculator. We say 40 multiplied by 12 equals, and voila, there it is, 480. So it's 480 Rand, okay, to park my car there for 12 days. That's not bad, hey? It's not a bad price. Okay, next question. Um, so, yeah, let's just have a look at that question because something's just jumped into my mind here. The question was, how much would you pay per day? Ah, so I misread the question, hey? I worked out how much would you pay for all 12 days, but per day you're only going to pay 40 Rand. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I thought of that now. All right, next thing. Um, how much would you pay in total? if your car was parked for the 14 days during the month of July. Oi, why are they telling me about the month of July? There's something funny here. Why are we talking about July? Let's have a look here. There they give us our rates. Oh, look here. There's a 10% discount on all bookings for December. 
That's why they've told me we're parking in July. So in July, if I park for 14 days, it costs me 40 Rand per day. So 40 Rand per day for the 14 days. Okay, now out comes our calculator again, we hope. In anticipation, there it is. And we're going to say, right, 40 multiplied by the 14 gives me 560 Rand. So 560 Rand is my answer there. Straightforward, simple, easy. And guys, one of the reasons I know this was going to be an easy question was because of this thing here, the mark allocation. Okay, remember what I always say to you, there's no such thing as a question by itself. Every question has a mark allocation. If it doesn't, there's something wrong. It just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense at all. Okay, next one. How much would you pay in total if your car was parked for 15 days during the month of December? Ah, now we remember that there's something funny about the month of December. So 15 days each day cost me 40 Rand, but there's that 10% discount. So we're going to say, right, 15 days multiplied by the 40 Rand equals, and we take our calculator and we say we've got 15 days. So I'm just going to kind of cheat there, change the 14 to 15 equals 600 Rand. So we've got 600 Rand that it's going to cost me to hire that uh, or to park my vehicle normally. But because this is December, they're giving me a 10% discount. So guys, we've got to work out what is 10% of 600. Now I know you all know that 60 already, but let's pretend we don't. How would we calculate it? We'd say 10 over 100. Why over 100? Because percent is always over 100. So 10 over 100 times 600 Rand equals when we do that on our calculator, we're going to get 60 Rand. So we're paying 600, we're getting 60 discount. Guys, it's only going to cost us 540 Rand. I say only, but that's quite horrendous. Don't you think, Ty? Just mm. putting your car somewhere for and 15 days and giving them 540 Rand for it. That is super expensive. It's like, I would not plan to do but that. But I think it's still cheaper than putting it in the airport parking. True. So, mm. Yeah, you got to weigh it up, hey? Mm. All right, so, next one. Um, what do you think SQ means? Right, let's have a look at this. 1 to 5 days, 60. 6 to 10, 50. 11 to 15, 40. 16 and over, SQ. What's that mean? Guys, basically that means if you see SQ, the price is going to vary. And there's a reason for that. If I go in and I say, right, I want to park my car and it's going to be longer than 16 days, they're going to say, well, how many days? If I say it's going to be for 20 days, they're going to come up with a price. If I say, listen, I'm parking my car in there for two months, wee, that's quite cool, that's a lot of business. They're going to charge me a little bit less because they want that business. They're still going to make a lot of money, but they're going to charge me a little less. In other words, there's not a fixed price that's been set out. Okay, they are playing around with the price. It depends on different circumstances. Okay, the other thing they might want to see as well is, well, are we very busy? Can we afford to keep this car for two months, uh, or the, um, or would we rather like bring in cars that are just running two or three or four days because we're making a lot more money out of them, right? In the same way, sometimes you go off to a restaurant. And you look at it and they've got prices and prices and then next to some things like lobster. Okay, I don't know who would want to eat that funny crawly animal anyway. <laughs> but if you see this say lobster, oh, I feel like eating a lobster. Okay, um, Then you look and next to it there's a price. It says SQ. And you, it's like, well, how many rands is that? And that means you've got to ask the waiter. Because that price is going to fluctuate. It could be the season where lobsters are difficult to get hold of. Then you're going to pay a lot of money. Or else, gee, there are lobsters all over the place. Then you're not going to pay as much. 
All right. Same with crabs. I, I, I just can't believe that people eat crabs. I mean, those are those funny things. Those are such stupid animals. They don't even walk straight. They walk to the side. They don't even know how to walk straight. <laughs> and yet some people just absolutely love eating them. In fact, Ty, the first time I met my wife, okay, mm -hmm. well, the first time I met her family, they decided to throw a huge party in, in honor of meeting me. And then they got to know me, and then they never threw another party <laughs> again. But um, at that stage, they were quite chuffed to get to know me. And so they brought in crabs okay? okay and I sat down to my meal looking at these things sitting on my plate all this one thing sitting on my plate and I just remember then my faith growing unbelievably because I realized the only one way I was going to get through this meal was through prayer and so <laughs> as I looked at this funny thing I attempted to try and eat it and I was just horrified at this woman that I proposed to. The way she just ripped off its legs, chowed, broke through the skin, ripped its shell open, and just there was just crab all over her face, and she was just having a great time eating this. And I was thinking, holy cow, what am I marrying here? Okay, but some people eat crab. Why did I get onto that story? Oh yeah, the, the restaurant. So you <laughs> might go into a restaurant and see, oh, I want some crab. SQ. That means you've got to ask the person or the waiter and say, listen, pal, how much is the crab? And he can say, well, we can't find many on the beach, so we're going to charge you 800 rand. Or you could say, sheesh, the crab's running all over the beach today. We'll only charge you 5 rand. Okay, do you understand? Cool, let's move on. Next one. Um, here we go. On the set of axes, sketch a graph that indicates the total cost of parking a vehicle during the month of March. Remember to name your graph and to also label the axes. Now let's have a look at this. Okay. Horrible, 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 horrible. This examiner, okay, the person who set this test, which was me incidentally, just was out to get his students. First of all, he hasn't labeled the axes. He's expecting his students to do that. He hasn't given the title for the graph. He's expecting his students to do that. And more importantly, and more horribly, he has not even put numbers on my set of axes. So now me as a student, or you as a student, has got to sit in that exam venue, look at this and say, holy cow, now we've got a problem. Okay? So let's tackle the problem. The first thing we're going to say is this, that this um, vertical axis, and, and for the guys who uh, didn't tune into uh, the grade 11 lesson, we said there's a way to remember which is horizontal and which is vertical. If I stand up on, the field, on a field or on a cliff and I look out, I see the horizon. Horizon, horizontal. Okay? Vertical starts with a V and an arrow also has a V in it. And that's the vertical axis. Okay, so I'm going to say now my vertical axis is the cost in rands. Okay, and I'm going to write it here. Cost in rand. Okay. And the only reason I'm using the word rand is so that when I put the figures on the axis, I don't have to put an R in front of every single figure. Okay. If I just said the cost, I would have to say R100, R200, R300. Okay. Then at the bottom, I'm going to say this is the number of days that I hire my vehicle. Okay. And we are only going to be able to draw this up to 15 days. Why? Because 16 and over, well, we're not sure what the price is. Remember, we got that SQ price. And that means nothing to me. So I'm only going to go up to day 15. So let's see if I've got 15 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 4. I've got 15. Great. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to say this is day 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, and this is day 10. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just going to grab a glass of water here. Uh, water's so good for you, hey? Okay, and then the finally this is day 15. Now, 
We've got to work out our costs. So guys, we've got to know, we obviously are going to start at zero. We have to start at zero. And we're going to go all the way up to some figure up here. But we're not sure what that figure is. So I would advise that you take the high, work out the highest possible figure. And what is my highest possible figure? It's going to be day 15 times 40 Rand. And I think we did that on our calculator early. We said 40 times 15 is 600. So I know I'm dealing with up to 600 Rand. So how am I going to do it? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You know what? I'm going to make every block 50 Rand. And that should get me to 600. Let's have a look. So we're going to say 50, oops, let's just get a pen, that's always important, I find, before you write. Um, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 450, 600 Rand. Okay, so there we've worked out our axes. So just to sum it up for you so far, we said to work out our axes, first thing, let's try and find our highest figure. Okay? We said it was 600 Rand. I then divided the blocks. So I said, well, we've got 13 blocks. 13 divi oh, 600 divided by 13 uh, was just a little less than 50 or a little more than 50. So I'm going to make each block count 50 Rand. Okay? Can we understand that? And I think it's straightforward. Now what we have to do is we've now got to plot the graph. Okay. Now, guys, you will notice that from our question, from the data they give us, they say one to five days. In other words, they are not telling us what it cost for naught days. Why not? Well, because they can't charge me if I don't park my car there. Can they? Imagine if I'm walking down the road and some stranger comes to me, taps me on the shoulder and says, yeah, you owe me 50 rand. Why? Because you didn't park your car in my garage. That makes no sense. Imagine walking down the road, you get a tap on the shoulder and the guy says, hi, I work at a restaurant and you owe me 400 rand. Why? Because you did not eat at my restaurant. And that just doesn't add up, does it? Walking down the road, and a guy taps you on the shoulder and says, How's it? You owe me 2,000 Rand. Why? Because you didn't fly on my aircraft to Cape Town. Hey, that just, it makes no sense, folks. So if I don't use their vehicle or, or their, their garage, they can't charge me for it. Okay? So I don't use it, and they're not going to charge me at all. Now, if I use it for a day, what was the cost per day? Well, up to the first five days, they're going to charge me 60 Rand. So I'm going to say, right, day one is 60. There's 50, so 60 is going to be just above that, okay? Two days, it's going to be 120, somewhere over there. Okay, uh, three days, three times six is 180, somewhere over there. We get four days, five days. Uh, 5 times 60 is 300 Rand, somewhere over there. So if I were to draw that graph, and I'm going to try and draw it with a straight line, I'm going to say my graph is going to look something like that. Okay? Got it? I think that's kind of interesting to note. Okay? I think we've got to take a break. Mm -hmm. Firstly, because I'm going to have a drink of water, because my yes. voice is doing funny things to and me. And we're not trying to have you go mute. And I don't want to go mute, <laughs> otherwise my producer goes quite hysterical backstage. <laughs> and then secondly, uh, I think the guys at home just need a quick little break and then we'll come back and finish the question. Definitely. So guys, remember, I still have this book to give away, so make sure you get those questions in so we can answer them in the third part of the show. So guys, make sure you stay tuned, have those pens out, have those pads out, make notes, tell your friends to tune in. So guys, we'll see you after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Mindset Learn Extra. We're doing grade 12, Maths Literacy with Peter here. Going through some awesome examples, going through some really interesting stuff. So guys, 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 I cannot stress enough 
Make sure you keep talking on the page, talk to me so I can talk to Peter so we can get all your questions and answers. If you're having any issues, any problems, if you're lost anywhere, make sure you get those questions to me so I can hand them over to Peter. And guys, again, 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 I still have this book to give away, so make sure you get those questions in and we'll answer them at the end of the show. Pete, I'm gonna hand over to you now. Let me see this book. Guys, I, I've got to push this book as well. Hey, it's wonderful, it's a Learn Extra book. It's past exam papers for grade 12, and it comes from a whole lot of different uh, years, all different education, uh, Department of Education, they pass papers, paper one, paper two, all the way, I think it ranges right from 2008 up to last year, which is absolutely brilliant. And you know what, there's only one way to learn when you are getting towards the end of grade 12, and that's by doing past paper after past paper after to pass paper. In fact, Mama Tricks, the only thing we do in the last three or four weeks before uh, they write their finals is I uh, give them past papers and say, right guys, do this. And the next day they come into class, sure, thank goodness we did that, now work's finished. No, no, surprise, surprise, there's another one, do this. Oh, jeez, another one. And the following day, hey guys, another surprise, there's another one. Okay, and if you think that the first maths lit uh, exam paper was started in 2008, so you've got 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and two, oh no, not 2012, that one's still a secret at the moment. Yes, that would be. But, uh, <laughs> but you've got four years worth of exams, paper one and paper two. And this fantastic prize that we're giving away today is Learn Extra Mathematical Literacy Past Exam Papers with the model answers, so you can even check your work. And I think there are even some of my papers in here, I think, are there? Mm. No, they probably weren't good enough. Oh, they could be. Okay, so that's the prize for today. Now, our last question we were saying, we're taking our car, we're going off to the airport, and we're saying to a company, guys, here's my car, please look after it. I don't want to park it in, in the parking lot. Why? Because I just don't want to. And I know you guys will look after my parking a lot better, uh, my car a lot better. And the company says, right, if you give us your car and we look after it for day one, two, three, four, or five, we'll charge you 60 Rand for every day that you have your vehicle um, with us. Then they say, but if you keep your car with us, and let's have a look at the table. If you keep your car with us for six to 10 days, we'll only charge you 50 Rand for having your car with us. So now let's draw this, okay? So if I've got it for six days and we charge 50 Rand, Six times 50 is 300. Now have a look here. Hello, hello, hello. Let's just get a different color. They're going to charge me the same whether I keep my day a car in the a parking for five days or for six days. It's exactly the same price. Let's draw it. Okay, here it is here. Okay, S straight line. Oops, my line's gone a little bit Okay, but basically there's a straight line there for five to six days, same price. Now, what happens if I park my car there for seven days? Well, seven times 50 is going to be 350 Rand. There it is. What happened? Oops, oh, sorry, no, now I've done all kinds of weird and wonderful things. You see, you try and be clever, you use technology and it blows up in your face. <laughs> so there it is over there. If I keep it now for eight days, eight times 50 is 400. If I keep it in there for nine days, nine fifties or 450. If I keep it for 10 days, 10 times 50 is 500 rand. So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to use my straight line and say right from there all the way to that point. There it is, a straight line. Now do you remember earlier I said whenever we have a straight line with a graph, we've got to understand that a straight line means something is consistent. And what's consistent? Well, for the first five days, the consistent value was that number 60, okay? 60 Rand per day for the first five days. That's why I got this lovely straight red line. For my next few days, from day five, uh, six onwards, it was 50 Rand a day. So that's why I've got a straight line, okay? Now, let's have a look what happens from day 11 to 15. Well, from day 11 to 15, I'm only paying 40 Rand a day. So we're going to look at day uh, 11. 11 times 40 is 440. 
In other words, guys, this now is going to be, and I'm going to use a different color pen. Let's use green. Why? Just because I want to. Um, 11 times 40 is 440, which is round about over at this mark over here. Oi, oi, oi. Now have a look at that. It's actually cheaper for me to keep my car with them for 11 days than what it would be to keep it there for 10 days. Interesting scenario, hey? So what is this company trying to do? They're going to try and entice me to keep their car with them for longer and for longer and for longer, okay? Because ultimately, they're going to make more money in the end. Now, 12 times 40 is 480, still a little bit cheaper than what it would be for 10 days. Now, 13 times 40 is going to be 520, somewhere up there. And eventually we get to day 15, and we said 15 was 600. Now, take a note, we had to take a bit of a dive down there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, right, from there all the way up to there. Now, gentlemen, you will see that we've actually got, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, ladies, I must apologize. Every now and then I say, <laughs> gentlemen, but you've got to understand, that's because I only teach a group of boys. From 7.30 in the morning every day, it's boys, 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 boys. So sometimes I get a bit out of control and I say, right, gentlemen, and I forget that I'm talking to the nation, yeah? And the ladies in the nation as well. So it's a bit of a relief. Okay, <laughs> so looking at this here now, you can see we've got a graph that's made up actually of five little parts. Three of the parts are straight lines. Now, this is what I want you to take note of. Can you see the gradient of those three lines? And I've done them in three colors um, deliberately here. I've got a green line, which is not as steep as the yellow line. But the yellow line is not as steep as the red line. Why? Because my red line, we are dealing here with 60 rand a minute. Let's write that down. 60 rand, uh, sorry, per day. My yellow line, we said 50 rand per day. And my green line, we were working on 40 rand per day. So the higher the price, the steeper the gradient of the line. So here's a good question. Let's pretend we never told you how much it was per day. But we said to you, what rate is cheaper? Just by looking at the angle of the graphs, you could actually say, you know what, the one with the lower, okay, or the less steep gradient must be the cheaper rate. In other words, from day 11 to day 15, I have a cheaper rate. Then, from day 6 to day 10, slightly more expensive. And from day 1 through to day 5, a lot more expensive. Okay. Guys, we can get and make this question more complicated. But you will see that with this question, I've actually drawn solid lines. Okay. I suppose if we wanted to get technical, we could say, you know what, maybe we should have made it dotted lines because we're not, allowed, we're not going to get a price for one and a half days. If I keep my car in the garage for one and a half days, they're probably going to charge me for two days. So over here, if you look over at this point over here, this is one and a half days. And so based on this graph, you could say, you know, I'm allowed to keep my car. Whoops, my goodness, what happened to that line? Okay, we'll just place snakes and ladders here. There we go. If you look at this thing here, you could say, based on this graph, if I keep my car in the garage for one and a half days, it's going to cost me just less than 100 rand. But in reality, um, they're not really going to do that. They're going to say, you keep your car in for a day, or, and if it's a day and a half, we're going to charge you for two days. So by rights, we should have made that graph a dotted line the whole way. Okay. Will your examiner be looking for that in matric? Well, I'm not 100% sure, okay? I know an examiner could give you a dotted line and say, why is this a dotted line? And then you would have to say it's a dotted line because they don't charge you for one and a half days, okay? You can't read the readings in between the whole numbers. In the same way, sometimes you get given a question like this, okay and you can get given a question like this and i don't know i'm making up things here um we're going to say right you are buying uh, a bag of sweets okay so this is the number of bags 
okay and this is the cost right and we come up with a line like this and we say one sweet two sweets three sweets four sweets or four bags of sweets well guys in reality you can't get half a bag of sweets you can't walk into a shop and say, yeah, those sweets look lovely. But you know what? I don't want a whole bag that's just been piggish. Okay? I'm not that like that at all. Indiana could eat a whole bag of sweets. Remember? Probably she could. She yeah. could. I, Indiana, think, I think I've seen her in action. Yeah, absolutely. Indiana, who used to, uh, who ties to replace today, um, <laughs> she used to be in here. And I brought a packet of chips and or a bag a ro I don't know, a tube of chips. Mm. into the theatre one day and while I was talking to the viewers she polished the entire <laughs> thing off it was it was embarrassing it really was Indy, I think that's, that's why selfish, she's not yeah. here now she's in the hospital at the moment yeah I think she's probably getting like stomach pumped I don't know I oh, know but you know what we shouldn't be horrible being horrible is not nice my son was horrible the other day he turned around to a little girl and said oh you ugly and horrible and I called him and I said David John don't ever be horrible now you just apologize to that girl now and he looked at her and he said, hey, I'm sorry, you ugly and horrible. Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, wrong kind of apology. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked again. Okay, what, where did we go? Oh, yeah, with the sweets. Yeah, we'll so you can't walk into a shop and say, fantastic, look at those sweets. But I can't eat a whole bag. I'll only take half. So you rip the bag open, pour half of it back on the shelf, and walk out with half a bag. Get to the till and say, how's it? This is what I'd like to buy, please. It's only half a bag. Please don't charge me for the whole bag. The shop attendant is going to be absolutely freaked out. Call the manager. Oh, oh my goodness. The cows are going to moo in the field. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Because you cannot just break things um, in half like that. Okay, so this type of graph, the perfect graph, would have to be a dotted line to show that even though it goes between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, you can't read off the values between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3. Do we understand that? Do you think the viewers have understood that? Yeah, like everyone seems to be having an awesome time. Oh, that's great, hey? because maths lit is awesome. It really is. Okay, have it you is. sat in on a maths lesson yet? This is probably my first maths lit lesson. Okay, but have you sat in on a maths one? Mm. You see, he doesn't even remember because it's so boring. Because maths is boring, but maths literacy, oh my giddy on, we can get excited and energetic, and it's just wonderful. And this is a lesson you'll never forget. So if the maths guys on Monday say, have you ever sat in a maths lit lesson? You go, oh yeah, I did, and I loved every minute of it. That's going to be your answer. I'll be watching on Monday to make sure of that. Okay. All right. Let's see if there's another question here. Mm. I think it's our final question of the mm. day. Describe two features or characteristics from the graph you have drawn. Okay, so let's look at that graph quickly and just let's come up with two characteristics or two features. Now guys, if they ask you things like that, you can basically answer anything as long as it makes sense from your graph. So the first thing I'm gonna say is this. I have different costs and the different costs are represented by different gradients. I can say that day five and day six is the same. I can say, you know, if I have a car on day 11 and 12, it's cheaper than, oh, sorry, not hire a car. If I park my car on 11 and 12 days, it's cheaper than parking it on 10 days. You'll notice every time as we come to the end of the lesson, I talk faster and faster and faster and faster because I've got to hand over to Ty, time's out. Yes, and again, guys, make sure you tune in. If you, just, if you had as much fun as, you, we, as we did today, make sure you're in for the next lesson. And guys, remember, I'm still giving away that book, and the winner is, in fact, we actually found the winner, Telemonie. Telemonie, I hope I got it right. We've got it for you, and we're gone. Guys, see you next time.